Hello and welcome to the 90 Minute Cynic podcast. I'm your host, Chris Gallagher, and I'm joined by uh, an illustrious panel, a handsome panel, a hip panel, hip to the hop, don't stop, except I always like panic when I do the intro and then just start rambling. That's what you've done, Chris. Introduce us. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Dermot Coyle. Hello. Um, the, the face in terms of the podcast with <laughs> half the other face being Louis. I just realised as soon as I said face, he was upset. So we're a two-faced podcast? You're a two-faced, exactly. very two-faced. <laughs> no, um, Dermot Coyle's here. How are you, Dermot? I know, pretty good. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Good. We've brought you in for the, the Rangers preview. You were yep. complaining and moaning about it last I time. <laughs> you made quite a stink coming to my door, chapping on the door. Gaffer, I've not, not been picked for the yeah, big games. Benched for the big one. Yeah, the Callum McGregor of the podcast comes in, does a job, and then he's out the door. No, no, he'd be yep. seen for weeks. Um, Obviously, terrific is awesome. Uh, this guy. Yep, here again. McCaff bot. McCaffrey, Louis, what? the owl. Jesus. I know, I've went a bit mental. No, it's good to be back, Chris. Good to be here. Good to be back. Good Looking to be forward here. to the game at the weekend. Looking forward to the game at the weekend. We will talk about the game at the weekend, of course. Um, but uh, we've got other things to talk about. Uh, I want to open the podcast by talking. Uh, it's sadly uh, John Lambie passed away today. I don't know if oh, you've I didn't seen. Realize that. Uh, no. Yeah, John Lambie passed away today. Um, do, you, do you remember much about John Lambie, Louis? Because he wasn't. He's not really been in the spotlight. I know over that. The last I, couple of years. I, I know his name and I know his face. I remember him for when I was. A younger, but I knew he was in football. But yeah. I mean, I don't know a lot about the man's career. But obviously, there was a lot of a lot of people talking about him today on social media and stuff. And yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, he's one of those kind of uh, big characters from like mm. from. I guess you'd say our kind of youth yeah, of when we were teenagers and stuff. His nineties all the yeah. way through with Thistle. He was kind of bit of a legend, wasn't he? Uh, Thistle, Chick Charlie came out and said he, he was like a dad to him and stuff. Uh, Hamilton as well, and yeah. Falkirk. Um, I, I just always thought, I just wanted to open up with the, uh, I'm going to read it out. Um, During a match, striker Colin McGlashan was involved in a clash of heads with an opponent. On being told that McGlashan was concussed and didn't know who he was, Lambie replied, great, tell him he's Pele and get him back on, which I always thought was a <laughs> Was that actually Lambie? Because I've heard it attributed to a few different folk. I've heard it contributed. <laughs> Over the years. <laughs> yeah, but let's the just... just died there. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. I could give him that at least. <laughs> uh, but no, John Lambie, um, genuinely a uh, character of uh, Scottish football and it's uh, sad for his passing. Uh, right, I want to ask you both a question, um, and I'll, again, this is something I'd like the listeners to kind of get involved in, just tweet us your kind of thoughts on this question. Um, I'm asking this because I've been looking through Twitter over the last couple of days and we've obviously, you know, Celtic games are going on, um, we're tweeting about Celtic games, we're tweeting about players, we're tweeting about tactics, we're tweeting about, tweeting about performance. Um, other Celtic accounts and other Celtic fans are tweeting about Rangers quite a lot. Um, there's uh, the whole Sevco obsession sort of thing. Um, I find it really tiresome, um, personally. That's not to say I don't think you know. Still, actively, Celtic should be looking to you know have punishment for for what they did in the past, etc. Right? Because we're all, we're all in the same boat. And we understand that. Um, there's a lot of accounts that are kind of happy that um, you know Rangers are in turmoil, right? And Rangers are. Um, Let's be, for lack of a better word, screwed. Um, you know, they, they're going through managers, etc., um, etc. Et terrific. That's good. Right. Uh, no, exa- listen, hi. I, I'm, I'm all with you. It is hilarious in the whole idea of Rangers being um, uh, crushed mm-hmm. and their, their yeah. fans being having their, their spirits crushed. There's no greater joy. Do you know what? There is no greater joy. <laughs> However, the question I'm going to ask you guys, and I want to know the thoughts of our listeners, is... Um, do you want Rangers to mount a challenge? Because we are at a position where we're potentially going to do back-to-back trebles. Um, and there isn't really a challenge. Essentially what I'm saying is, um, do you want that challenge? Because, let's be honest, Aberdeen aren't, haven't given us that challenge. Aberdeen are, are, are so bereft of a backbone. Um, in terms of the players and their manager, that they, they shit it every time. See, I was trying to be all fancy there, and then I'm like, they shit it. Um, do you want Rangers to make a challenge at some point 
or do you just want to go do you want to win every title do you want to do 10 in a row and then onwards and upwards without any sort of challenge Dare I mean I'd rather you? the challenge came from someone else I mean I'm quite happy to see Rangers fold and disappear to be honest uh, <laughs> sort of bye bye and Aberdeen Hearts Hibs whoever can provide the challenge I think that the standard in Scottish football did rise from the other teams over the last sort of five years or so uh, since Rangers sort of basically went out of business and ceased to exist so it, it's going to take them a while to get the, the money and the investment so they can actually challenge Celtic I mean there's a, a massive discrepancy between the amount of money that we've got and can afford to spend on sort of our playing budget and the, the amount that the other teams yeah. can afford so I mean it, it isn't a level playing field by any manner of means so a, a challenge isn't it's going to take a while to come but for the good of Scottish football it will come you know um, whether that's us becoming complacent someone just getting a couple of decent players and a genius manager and having a, a, a great season which is kind of thing that happens in France every so often yeah. you know with like sort of Lille or Montpellier sort of win the league out of kind of nowhere for one season because a couple of decent players in a, a system works but uh, I obviously want Celtic to keep on so winning everything but so essentially you want a challenge you just don't want it to be from them I, I don't see sometimes people seem to think that the challenge has to come from Rangers I don't really see why that's the case and actually I think things get better when they, they weren't there what are your thoughts? I agree with Delmet I think <coughs> I think it doesn't have to be um, the challenge doesn't have to come from them and I'm loving life right now I think it's crying yeah. see watching them just capitulate just, uh, not even capi- I love it when their hopes get really high for a wee period of time and then they get brought back down and then their hopes get high again yeah. like they're now they're probably more confident than they've been in the last few weeks because they won 4-0 at the weekend and they're going to play us in the semi-final and they'll, they'll their fans will believe that they're going to win that game yeah, um, which is which is great because when it doesn't happen, the misery and sorrow that's heaped <laughs> upon them is is terrific. Spoiler, so, spoiler alert! I would, um, I, I, I've, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying dominating and winning things. And uh, I don't know. I would like to see them. Um, I, I'd like to see it go more the other way. I'd like to see them be deducted points for grant administration again. That's not yeah. happening a wee while, and I'd like to see that happen. Um, but. Do you know what I, th- I think? Like Dermot's right. See, the, see the standard of football, like the standard of of the rest of the clubs, in the time that since they um, started again, basically, it's been fantastic. Like yeah. you look at that top six, the top six, arguably top seven teams in the league just now, um, are are doing really well, and their, their clubs are doing well off the park, and but. But more importantly, they're doing well off it. I mean, right, on it. I mean, you look at Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock went in and got a quality manager who's turned things around, and now their attendances are on the rise. And yeah. I mean, that's great for the league. But I think this split. I know we're going to come to the fixtures later, but the split overall in those top six teams, you've got some cracking, cracking games in there. So yeah. it just shows you how far I think Scottish football has came. You see, down in the Championship, I think. I think that's probably one thing that I I, I would kind of give Rangers credit for, but they get credit along with Hibs and Hearts, but see when they, they were in the Championship and the two Edinburgh clubs are in the Championship, it did put a lot more focus on the Championship, and I personally pay a lot more attention to the Championship now than I ever did before they were in it, but even now, I mean, I, I, I look at the fixtures every weekend and, and see how the likes of Dundee United, St Mon, Falkirk, all these teams are doing. So yeah. overall, the standards get a lot better. The challenge doesn't have to come from them. Um, but you want a challenge. But so I would like one. Essentially. Uh, you know, I look at what Steve Clark has done at Kilmarnock. Yeah. Uh, same group of players, maybe with one or two additions. You know, the addition of Malumbo can't kind of be under underwritten by what he's done. That little bit of extra quality that maybe isn't and missing from most midfield in Scotland. Um, but I look at someone like Jack Ross at St Mirren, and I think to myself, Derek McInnes leaving Aberdeen. You know, let's say he gets to this at the end of the season and he thinks to himself, you know, there's no no further I can take them. I can't really take them any further. Um, specifically if they lose the Scottish... Well, specifically if they win the Scottish Cup. If they win the Scottish Cup, then I think he'll definitely walk away. If they don't win the, the Scottish Cup, an argument could be said, well, you've only won one trophy. You should be pushing for... You know, you should stay until you win something else. But I can imagine him maybe 
going down to the championship next season. To me, I would be excited as a Scottish football fan for, and I, I feel sorry for St Mirren fans saying this because, you know, they're 21 points clear at the top of the championship. Um, I'm sure their fans uh, are looking forward to next season um, because of what he's done and how he's developed them. I mean, when he took over, there were five points yeah. from the bottom. Um, and my, my fact is, the fact what I'm trying to say is, um, I think a lot of these clubs are one or two wee things away from actually challenging us. Yep. Not necessarily for the title, but just challenging us, putting a little bit more pressure on us than we've got at the moment. <laughs>